Alright guys, my name is the Meta Goblin, and today I'm going to be giving you my classic World of Warcraft Hunter leveling guide. The video will cover a number of sections. First of all, we'll go through the FAQ section, what aspect should you be in, what kind of pets should you be using, that kind of thing. Secondly, we'll go through the optimal talent build, then we'll go through the rotation and the playstyle, how to kill stuff fast, all that kind of good stuff. Then we'll talk about the gear and the stats that you want to be going for, then we'll have a bow progression section. And then lastly, I'm going to finish off with some money saving tactics to save up for your mount. Just before we jump in, guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch, as when the game comes out, I'll be able to stream a lot more on Twitch. So let's jump into the FAQ section. The first big question people ask when they want to play Hunter is what pet should I use? The short answer to this question is that a boar is best until level 32, and then when Dash becomes available, for the cat, you switch to a cat, specifically the Stranglethorn Tiger, as this is the most convenient option. The reason why the boar and the cat are the best options are simply because of the intercept abilities that they have. The faster they get into combat, the less time you're going to spend killing each enemy, which means you save a lot of time in the long run. Cats don't have dash until level 32, but boars have charge from a very early level, and they also generate a good amount of aggro in their first hit, which is also very useful. The reason we swap to a cat is because 1, they have a slightly higher attack stat, and 2, they have a second DPS ability to dump their focus points, so overall they just do a lot more damage. Um, and it's because they have bite and claw rather than just one of those options. You want a more, you know, if you want a more detailed answer, I do actually have a 40 minute video on the topic on, on this channel, I'll leave it on the end screen of this video as well. It will tell you the best locations to get pets, when to upgrade them and what pets to tame to upgrade your pet's abilities. So what aspect should you be using? It depends on your environment, okay? If there is a distance between your enemies and you're chain pulling a lot, I, I usually just stay in aspect of cheetah because you're going to waste mana a bit and just waste a global cooldown. But if you're taking down a cluster of enemies, like a murloc camp or something, you know, when they're really close together, or in a castle, I would just stay in aspect of a hawk, you know, get them all killed. And uh, when you get your mount, if you are going to be on that mount for longer than 25 seconds, then the mount will be faster than just running with aspect of a cheetah, but if it's a shorter space of time than 25 seconds, then it's better to just stay in aspect of a cheetah and run to your next enemy. So what weapon should you use? Any conditions to bear in mind when it comes to picking a weapon? Honestly, not really. I would always just go for the best range DPS option that you have currently available. Technically, slower weapons are slightly better because it's easier for you to kite with them because you have more seconds between your auto shot attacks to strafe, and you will also consume less ammo, which means you will save a lot of money. Anyway, our second section, we're going to go through the talent build. Remember, when it comes to talent, a lot of people in the community like to constantly, constantly argue about the difference in one talent point, which probably makes about 0.5 difference to your DPS. Whatever build you go for, it's only going to be making a 10% you know, difference either way. So I'll tell you what most people go for, and then I'll tell you what I personally go for. So there's two main principles when it comes to spending talent points as a hunter. The first principle is we want to be increasing our pet DPS and our pet survivability. Right, we want our pet to be generating a lot of aggro, and we also don't want him to die. And we want him to have better sustainability. So we are going to be specking deep into beast mastery. And the second principle really is just increasing your DPS person. So when it comes to talenting, you know, most people are either going to do one point of improved aspect of Hawk and max out endurance training, or they're going to max out both of these talents. Personally, I, because I'm using a Born to level 32, I don't feel the need to improve his defensives that much. But when he switches over to a cat, then I do feel the need to increase the pet's defensives more. So what I do is I actually just max out improved aspect of a Hawk, uh, pretty much straight away. This is just a little bit more of a riskier build basically, and I go to improve revive pet. And then I get three points in endurance training because the other talents are pretty useless. And then it's pathfinding because this is a really key talent to getting you around much faster. And then we go for beastal swiftness, swiftness because this gets your pet into combat even faster. And then from here, you can max out unleashed fury. And then when this is maxed out about level 27, you can finish off your defensive talents getting thick hide and endurance training, and then you're switching over to a cat. From here, the talent build becomes very simple. You're just optimizing the DPS of your pet. You can be more, even more of a glass cannon by just ignoring these other talents in endurance training and thick hide. So I'll show you what that looks like, but really it's the same. You know, you can go for these talents and you, you, may, you may also not want to. It really depends on how much balls you have, basically. But from here, you know, it's in maxing out ferocity. 
and then basically you want to get intimidation as soon as possible though to be honest so I've got one point there second point because intimidation is really useful stun um, you want to be using this primarily when a enemy is casting because that's going to save your life quite a lot and then from here Beastral Discipline is you want to max that out as soon as possible because this really does increase the DPS of your pet and then Frenzy and then as soon as Beastral Wrath becomes available you get that and then you get Frenzy and from here the build becomes more about just increasing your DPS you've got efficiency for slight reduced mana cost and then bit of aim shot Hawkeye and then these last five points you can put them wherever you want really um, you know you can actually put them back into increasing your pet defensives it, you know if you decide to go to the, for this glass cannon build you will have these leftover five points and I'd recommend putting them in, into either monster slaying or humanoid slaying depending on well depending on what you're killing in the last zone that you're questing in so that's and that's pretty much it so let's run through the playstyle section the playstyle changes depending on what level you are and what abilities you have available but first of all let's cover some essentials some ground rules and some really useful tips and tricks to increase your sustainability in your DPS first of all take your pet off growl keybind it and manually use it yourself you should only be using about one growl per kill if you're spamming growl you're basically wasting focus and wasting DPS secondly you'll probably need to change when you're using arcane shot or multi shot arcane shot is really crap in all honesty it wastes mana very quickly and doesn't even scale with your range attack power it kind of scales with spell power so sometimes multi shot is more efficient to use than arcane shot but it depends on what ranks you have available and what water level you have av available at your current level so the point is that you should experiment and kind of see what feels the best my next tip is to not neglect immolation trap you can use immolation trap to kill enemies really fast which can be useful when taking more than one enemy down what you can do also is pull the mob with your serpent sting force them to walk over your immolation trap then command your pet to attack the next enemy uh, and then you also start attacking the second enemy while your serpent sting and immolation trap rot the first mob down while the first mob is basically you know smacking you in the face in your body tank here then you just use a bandage and rinse and repeat another tip is to command your pet to auto attack while you're drinking this massively saves time you know you shouldn't be stopping to drink or lounge around really and then um, my last tip is to use all your cooldowns whenever they are available like rapid fire and beast or wrath it's important to note that when as if the aspect of a hawk haste buff procs when you have rapid fire active you will generate a lot of aggro because you're doing so much dps and you probably have to do some kiting as well so yeah bear that in mind so level 1 to 10 is pretty straightforward first of all you should get your hands on an auto shot timer so it's basically an add-on you will know exactly when your auto shots are occurring and between these auto shots you should be strafing away from your enemy this means you can carry on dealing range damage which means you know you just be doing a lot more damage and you know trust me it's much better than getting into melee range and doing melee damage instead first thing you want to do is get max ranged and use serpent sting but also allow an auto shot to get through just after your serpent sting then you strafe with a concussive shot so using you're basically strafing using concussive shot at the exact same time then you stop for an auto shot strafe with arcane shot and then stop for an auto shot and you kind of rinse and repeat that and then you may want to dip into melee range if a mob is getting really close just to execute him with raptor strike and that's what you're going to be doing level 1 to 10 you're going to be doing a lot of damage um, with this playstyle rather than you know getting into melee range when you unlock the pet the rotation totally changes first of all command your pet to attack with a growl you know slash cast growl in the macro then you use serpent sting the reason why I like to use Serpent Sting, I'm going to use Serpent Sting basically before my pet actually gets to the target. And the reason why I use it is because it's a very low aggro ability because it does it takes a while for it to, to do its damage. If you start using instant damage abilities in the opening of combat, you're going to pull aggro off the pet. But normally when you use Serpent Sting, you're not going to pull aggro off the pet. But anyway, then the pet gets into melee range, uses his first melee hit, and he uses Growl and takes the aggro. Then you do an auto shot, and then you wait for the pet to be about 60% health maybe 70 maybe even a little bit higher depending on how far you're specting to beast mastery and basically when the pet's at six percent health you're going to start using arcane shot or multi shot you know you may be able to use these two abilities earlier but in my experience it can pull aggro from the pet this is because you know the further you spec into beast mastery you increase your pet damage so you might you know you might be able to be a bit riskier because your pet is generating more aggro the important thing is to experiment and kind of feel the waters with what you can get away with without aggroing the enemy from your pet 
This is important when you start implementing aim shot into your rotation. I personally prefer to use aim shot as an execute ability when the mob is about 30% health. I will start casting it when it's at 30% health and it should kill him off. You may want to use it in the opening. The point is to experiment, you know, because you don't want to be pulling aggro after pep because that is just going to be a pain in the backside. So let's talk about gear and stats. The stat priority is agility, intellect, and then spirit. The main stat you want to prioritize is agility. Agility will provide a flat out damage bonus to your auto shots, multi shots, and aim shots, but not serpent sting or arcane shot as these both scale with spell power. An immolation trap doesn't actually scale the stats in any shape or form. The reason I would go for intellect over spirit is because of a tip I gave you before. Okay, as a hunter, you want to be drinking while your pet is attacking rather than waiting outside of combat. There's literally no downtime as a hunter, you know, you shouldn't be stopping to lounge around, you should have. You have very high sustainability and you should be taking advantage of that, so since you're going to be in combat most of the time, spirit becomes just not very useful. The reason we want to be stacking some intellect is because it will improve your sustainability further as you won't need to stop to drink as often. Alright, and uh, lastly I want to finish this section talking about spell power gear. If you come across really good spell power gear, then you know, and no spellcaster needs it, then it might be worth picking the piece up, as this will boost your Serpent Sting and Arcane Shot slightly. And, um, you know, if you have some crappy piece with useless stats that just needs replacing it, then you may as well just pick up a good spell power piece if no one else needs it. So, for our weapon progression section, guys, it would take me ages to go through every single weapon individually, so basically I've made a Google document that you can just click in the description of this video, so be sure to check that out. So lastly, I'd like to finish my levelling guys with some quick tips to make money in order for you to save your mount at level 40. First of all, get skinning and vendor a leather. That will generate you a little bit of extra money. Secondly, you know, make friends of a tailor and get him to make you some bags because the more bags you have, more free space you have in the inventory, which means you can get more trash loot for you to vendor, which, you know, overall just means more money. Level first aid. Fourth tip, do cooking to make yourself some food. Um, and then if you have too much, you can actually just vendor it and generate even a bit more money. And you may be thinking, well, I don't want to do professions while leveling up, because that's going to waste time. That is true, which is why you should only craft when you're waiting for spawns, or if you're waiting for a boat or something like that. Seventhly, just stop buying food. Um, well, buy food as little as possible. Ask a mage instead, you know, you're on a boat with a mage, just ask him for some water. Just be a bit cheeky, you know, doesn't harm anyone. For eighth tip, Check the quest item money reward, right? So some items are just more expensive than others. You might need an add-on to do that, but um, you know, always pick the most expensive quest reward if you don't actually need to equip it. And lastly, just make a bank hole. You know, if you find materials when you're leveling, which you know will sell more in the auction house, just send them to your bank hole and sell them later on your bank hole. And uh, that's it. It's important to note that you can just leave them in the mailbox. You don't have to log into your bank hole as long as you log into your bank hole within 30 days and pick them up, then it should be fine. But anyway guys, that is the end of my Classic World of Warcraft Hunter leveling guide. My name is Ameta Goblin, until my next video, ciao.